Hello and welcome to another video. So recently in the last month a lot of uh, videos on library and YouTube uh, cropped up in which people are discussing whether is Linux for everyone, whether Linux is too difficult or is it like too complicated and things like that. So I think it started with Chris Titus Tech talking about Linux being not for everyone and then there was a response from the Linux gamer and more recently there was also a video about uh, Linux being too hard but Mental Outlaw also proposed a solution for the problem of Linux being too hard and there was also a video on the DistroTube channel in which uh, DT talked about Arch Linux and whether Arch Linux is a good choice or not if you want to learn about Linux but unfortunately I couldn't uh, find which uh, was exactly the video in which he talks about that but basically I wanted to share my opinions on that especially because I've been using Arch Linux for almost a year um, I have been using Windows before that so basically the first Linux distribution I installed on my desktop computer has been Arch Linux and is still Arch Linux and uh, recently I started to uh, set up some virtual servers to finally have my own web page and to run a few web-based applications for myself. So I had the chance of working on Debian and so in this video I wanted to kind of discuss an amalgamation of these topics is whether Linux is for everyone and uh, well is Arch Linux a good choice and to whom is Arch Linux a good choice and so of course there are these two kind of uh, schools of thoughts on in the broader Linux community like these two extremes about Arch Linux and one of them is saying that like installing Arch Linux is very difficult so if you don't have any experience with Linux and you don't know much about Linux you shouldn't even uh, like take a shot at it or if you take a shot at it like be very careful and like this kind of th school of thought and there is the other school of thought who will just tell you that well, Arch Linux is not really difficult to install. You just go through this installation guide, just you know, just copy and paste all these uh, commands into your uh, command line in, during the installation, and you will get a working Arch Linux system. And uh, this is actually like a very simple process, and it's uh, you shouldn't be too proud if you can do it. And so, if you've been following my channel, you might have noticed that I have a video series in which I go into this Arch Linux installation guide and go through go through it step by step and we'll basically not just copying and pasting the commands from the installation guide but we really try to understand what each command does and how the things we need to do to get like a working operating system are achieved in this Arch Linux installation process and so uh, Derek on DistroTube said something along the lines that whatever Linux distribution you install you will always have the uh, chance to learn more and more about your system as you try and uh, set it up in more and more uh, granularly for you know to, for it to conform to your own use case and uh, which I think this is kind of true this is probably kind of true like I mean you can install whatever distribution and start uh, reading uh, the manuals for the different uh, programs that are in that distribution or just you know just read general things about Linux. Well I think why installing Arch Linux is actually a very good uh, experience if you are really interested in how the system works is because it's just basically gives you all these uh, this list of commands and what you should definitely not do is just go through and copy and paste these commands. So as I am doing in my video series I actually go through like each step in very uh, much to the detail which I think is uh, necessary to understand so what you are doing. So and I think because there are a lot of uh, variations of what different things you can do based on maybe like different kind of like the internet network interfaces or different uh, partition schemes that you might want to employ the different file systems you might want to use like different kind of uh, configurations for all these other things like localization and uh, 
whatever like different types of bootloaders so you have you are presented with a lot of choices and you should make some informed decisions on these choices and also like even the most simple commands like you should understand why exactly do i have to set up the host names and the hosts like this way so what uh, is basically i think the advantage of arch linux compared to other distributions which would offer you a graphical user interface is that in Arch Linux, you are very much encouraged to start to understand the inner workings of this system at the moment you are, from the moment you are starting to install it. So, in my opinion, if you are installing Arch Linux properly, which by which I mean like you're just not just copy pasting, but really thinking about it step by step and understanding in each step what you are exactly doing. The thing is that if something goes wrong, you will probably have like a more detailed understanding of where things could have gone wrong. So on the contrary, if you install a, a Linux system from like a graphical installer or, you know, some installation procedure which just uh, gives you a user interface, like a graphical user interface with a desktop environment from the beginning, then I think you are tempted to not really look into things unless something starts to go to grow wrong but in that case you will have a more difficult time to understand exactly why things are starting to go wrong and so in mental outlaws video he talks about how people are usually tempted to go lazy and just uh, learn the minimum minimum amount of things about uh, the tools they want to use so when people switch to linux for some reason and uh, Linux is too hard for them, they just give up and they, instead of learning more about the uh, system, they just maybe go back to Windows and fail uh, the transition. In case of Arch Linux, I think what is uh, really good that it is really like every portion of the design of the Arch Linux system is anti-laziness. So basically in every step, of this uh, process when you install and start using Arch Linux, you are discouraged to be lazy. So basically in Arch Linux, if you install a package, like let's say we are installing the IWD program for the Wi-Fi uh, access, it will tell you like you should install the IWD package and then you have to start and enable the IW.service. So what it does, it doesn't do for you like when you install the IWD package it will just not start it by itself so you have to understand that getting a package from the repository and installing it on your system is a separate process than enabling it in the init system in systemd and for example in Debian which uh, I've been using on the VPS the virtual private server you can just uh, install with apt like install a, a package with apt and it will automatically start the system the uh, service for you and this thing even gets worse when it comes to something like snap packages so what i did is i installed the next cloud instance to try out so i'm just currently testing out what kind of solutions could i use on these uh, virtual servers and i installed nextcloud from a snap package and so on Debian, you are encouraged to use the uh, snap package for Nextcloud and this instant it updates itself and everything. And basically I have no idea how it works because the, uh, the uh, snap uh, install progress will just basically just download everything in the snap package and it will include all the dependencies and all like the web server and everything is going to be set up for you by like automatically so what it is good because you know i know nothing about <laughs> about setting up web servers i've never done that before and uh, i have not really installed like this kind of thing ever by myself but i can just type in one command and it will be ready and it will be almost like everything is working and so i the tutorial is like super short because you just install it and like 80 percent of the work is done you have to the manual thing you have to only set up like what is the host name and what uh, is the like the the URL 
or the DNS name for this website and stuff like that. So what is basically, so as long as things work, this is like a very good solution, but if something would go wrong on my, uh, on my next cloud installation, I would have no idea how to even approach uh, the problem because that is not like th th it's just Debian, the package management on Debian or just simply like the snap package manager. It just works around a different philosophy. It just works like it should be as simple as it possible for the user to set up these things. While on Arch Linux, you have this anti-laziness um, approach where basically you are encouraged to do as much uh, things manually as possible and even in cases like uh, we saw in my um, systemd boot video even for the bootloader this uh, very important process of uh, updating the bootloader after getting like a new version so the new package is arrived but you need to install it on the boot partition with this boot ctl command this automatic update for the systemd boot dot hook for like the pacman hook for that is not even included automatically so you have to just go and if you want the automatic update you have to do it is manually and maybe you know you want to do it in a different way and then you can just do it in a different way but Arch Linux doesn't do that for you and Arch Linux doesn't hold your hand in that process so in this uh, kind of uh, point of view, I think that actually I have to disagree with DistroTube on that, that Arch Linux is actually a much better distribution than like the Debian based things if you want to learn about Linux because Arch Linux forces you to do these things the non-lazy way. And uh, so is Linux for everyone? Well, probably, you know, like the good thing about Linux is that there is a wide variety of distributions out there and each distributions are built ar along like a different kind of philosophy and you know if you really want to go into the nitty-gritty and I think this is what uh, the mental outlaw uh, type of approach is uh, like he is the it's one of the guys who is like really anti-laziness because he uses Gentoo so if you are really really anti-laziness and you really want to learn a lot about your system don't go arch you should go gentoo and follow this guy's guidance because i totally agree with him on that that you have to learn and so if you think that you linux is not for you because linux is difficult then i think you just have to you know accept the fact that sometimes it's worth learning about new things it's worth uh, learning especially if you go to linux for the privacy reasons or you know you like the open source and the free software philosophies and don't want to use a proprietary operating system then well you don't really have much choice in that you want to follow through with your decision then i agree with with kenny in that you do have to just uh, you know plow through it and maybe you don't want to know that much detail so you just it's enough for you to get familiar with a new user interface so just go ubuntu or if you want to know more about your inner system inner workings of the system maybe you would want to go the arch linux or the gen 2 way but well i think in the end if what determines uh, what kind of operating systems you want to use is not this kind of like the philosophical approach like you are not against the your operating system spying on you you don't care if microsoft or apple gets to look at everything you do on your computer then sure you might have the opinion that well i need my adobe software i need my microsoft office i need my triple a uh, windows only online game titles then probably yeah you can just justify not using linux based on these practical considerations which is what chris titus and the linux gamer was giving us so well i think this is the end of today's video i've been rambling on for long enough i hope 
that my rambling made some sense and uh, I could get through my ideas on why Arch Linux was my choice when I decided to go Linux and why exactly I wanted to learn more about the operating system and Arch Linux seemed to be a good way and I think it is a good way. If you want to learn more about Linux, it's not the only way. You can also, you know, if you want to learn stuff more slowly, you can go the Ubuntu route and just, uh, you know, maybe one bit by bit while you are already using your operating system, you can bit by bit learn more about it. Or you can just be super hardcore and go the Gen 2 route and just try to understand as much about your system and not just about Linux, but even, you know, about compiling programs and how like building software works. And then you can go the Gen 2 route. And with that, I'm gonna leave you now and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.